back to Joey Pigza Loses Control. We were reading chapter five, which is called Caveman. And Joey's um, dad was getting a little irritated with his nicotine patch. He ripped it off and um, Joey noticed that his dad has a tattoo of a skull, which he decided he wanted one too. Um, so dad's coaching a baseball team and um, that's where they are right now. They're at the game and dad wants Joey to start playing as well, but he's kind of saying, you know, you should probably set the bench the first day because he's never really played before. Joey's sticking peanuts up his nose and doing all kinds of crazy things in the dugout. So I'm wondering if he's going to get in trouble. And then a lady with red hair comes. She's another coach. She gives Joey um, his own jersey. So I'm hoping. <laughs> Joey doesn't do something crazy on that football or the baseball field. All right, let's see. And you'll need a cap too, the lady said. She reached into the bag and handed me one, handed one to me. S C S was sewn onto the front in shiny gold thread. And cleats, are these the right size? They were. Yes, I said. Then she pulled out the best thing I had ever seen. It was a black sweatband with a, num a yellow number 17 on it. That's not for your wrist, she said to me. I understand you have a little buddy. You can slide this around his belly. This is so cool, I said, and just stared at it. Pablo will love it. Now put your jersey on, she said. You can't get into the game without an official pal jersey. I yanked my shirt up over my head like it was covered with red ants. I put on my jersey and smothered it against my flat belly and breathed in the rubbery smell of the lettering. You need baseball pants, she said. Carter forgot to tell me. I looked down at my jeans. You can wear what you have on, but to look really sharp, you have to get the matching pants. What waist do you wear? I don't know, I said. She leaned forward and put her thumb on my belly button, then kept reaching around me until she got some measurement. Skinny, she said. You need to fatten up a bit. Like Hansel? Anyway, she said, it's just if you play the game, you need a couple extra pounds. I think your dad is going to have to put on an extra large pizza a day diet. I grinned. I loved pizza. Extra cheese and vegetables. I sang like I was ordering one over the phone. Your wish is my command, she sang back and pulled the phone out of her pocket and dialed. Hello? I'd like to order a pizza for delivery. Yeah. Extra cheese and extra vegetables. Yeah. What? Dad was yelling at some kid to pay attention or else he'd bury him up to his neck and use his head for second base. She held her hand over the phone and hollered, hey Carter, shut your trap, I'm ordering a pizza. Dad turned around with his mouth open. That's right, she said, put a sock in it. Then she returned to the phone. The pal field over by the Clement, the pal field over by the Clemente Memorial, yeah. Steel City Sports, cash, okay? And then she hung up. So they must be at a field called the PAL PAL Field, right next to the Roberto Clemente Memorial. By the way, she said and stuck out her hand, I'm Lizzie Fiddle, the sports store sponsor for your team and the gal that keeps your dad from going around the bend every game day. Is this his girlfriend? Nice to meet you, I said. I'll be seeing more of you, she replied. Right now, I better go chill the coach down before his head pops. Dad was threatening to wrap masking tape around some kid's eyes and make him play by instinct, like a freaking Luke Skywalker. Lizzie walked over and stood behind him. She was taller than he was and slapped the brim off his cap down over his eyes. He whipped around like he was going to fight, but by then she was trotting into the outfield to catch fly balls. 
When the game began, Dad started out all calm and helpful, but I knew it wouldn't last because watching him was like watching a big version of my old wired self. He gathered all the players around him. Okay, he said, we can whip these guys. We could show them who the losers are. We could win this easy and get back into second place. Now let's play ball. Then he twisted the game ball into the pitcher's glove. Virgilo, just throw heat. That's all it takes. Hi, hard heat. The last time they slaughtered your changeup. This time, only heat. You got it? Nothing fancy. Remember, a cannon doesn't need a curve or a slider or a fork ball. It just does one thing well. It fires heat. Now go out there and show them you got a cannon for an arm. Virgilo silently nodded along with Dad until Dad slapped him on the back, and then he ran toward the mound as if he had been shot out of a cannon. Batter up! The Empire shouted the moment he finished sweeping off home plate. Immediately, Dad started pacing back and forth and shouting at the other team's player. No batter, he yelled. Batter's got a limp stick. Virgilio leaned forward and sort of threw an overhand lob. Ball, moped the ump. Ball on what planet, Dad hollered. The catcher threw the ball back to Virgilio harder than Virgilio had thrown it at the plate. I hadn't played before, but I knew the pitcher should be throwing harder than the catcher. Now show him the cannon, Dad roared at Virgilio. Put some smoke on it. Virgilio threw the same slow pitch. Ball two, the umpire called. Dad jumped into the air. Ball, he shouted. A seeing eye dog knows that's a strike. On Virgilio's next pitch, the batter slammed the ball into the outfield for a double. I said, throw heat, son, heat, Dad screamed. This isn't T-ball. The next batter hit a double and drove in the first batter. The following batter cracked one up the middle, and Virgilio skipped out of the way and fell onto his side. Come on, Dad groaned. Show, show some bad intentions out there on the mound. Imagine you were throwing a brick through your teacher's window. What the heck? It must have been a heavy brick in Virgilio's mind. He lobbed it in there, and the kid hammered it over the fence. Ouch, Lizzie said and winced. She got up off the bench to try and calm Dad down because he was hopping from foot to foot while calling Virgilio and the umpire a bunch of names. And the coach on the other team was yelling back that this was a family activity and for dad to watch his language or he'd report him to the front office. By then, Lizzie had her arm around dad and I was glad she was bigger than him. And she began to steer him around by his head like he was a calf. She was going to wrestle to the ground and tie up with a rope. By the time Virgilio got out of the inning, we were down seven runs. He took a seat at the end of the bench and pulled his jersey up over his head and didn't move a muscle until he had to pitch again. At the end of the fourth inning, we were down 15 to zip. Okay, pigza, Dad said and tossed me the ball. Show them what heat means. Me? I said. Yeah, you, Dad replied. He pulled me to one side. One thing before take that mound he said I have to give my special pitchers only pep talk he put his arm around me and walked me away from the other players okay he continued this is all you ever need to know about baseball it is a game as old as the mount moment men went from animal to human and started hating each other it comes down to this a caveman with a stick versus a caveman with a rock and you are the caveman with the rock remember the rock rules. The rock is always in control of the situation. The caveman with the stick can't do a thing as long as you control that rock. Now get out there and show him who the superior caveman is. Then he slapped me across the butt and before I knew it, I was trotting out to the mound and I had no idea what I was going to do. As I cut across the grass infield, a kid in the other dugout yelled, mystery pitcher. I was a mystery, and I liked it. I stood on the mound and looked out at both dugouts and all the people sitting in the stands. Half of them wanted me to mess up, and half of them wanted me to succeed. 
it was about the same as being back in school where some of the kids were hoping I'd get better and the others just wanted me to do something screwy to drive the teacher nuts and stop the lesson. I always had people rooting for me both ways. I didn't realize it was preparing me for baseball. Okay, the catcher yelled, put her in here. And he punched his glove with his fist to give me a target. The batter was ready, so I just reared back and threw one as hard as I could. And you could hear the clang of the ball as it hit the umpire right in the wire mask. Oh my goodness. Ball one! The ump croaked as he staggered back and adjusted his mask. That's my kid who threw that heater. Dad hollered as he swung his arm over his head. Then he clapped his hands around his big mouth and yelled at the other coach. Watch out for my kid. He's a caveman. Then he turned to me. Show him what you got, Pigza. My next pitch kicked up the dirt around the batter's feet, and he danced all the way to the backstop. From that moment on, I knew he was afraid of me. I was the caveman with the rock, and all he could do was stand there and wait while I squinted in at the catcher as if I couldn't see far enough to tie my shoe. The third pitch hit the catcher in the knee, and he toppled over in agony. I was getting closer. Then I reared so far back that my hand nearly touched the ground, and I sprang forward and threw a smoker right down the middle. Strike, the ump called out. Once I got the target lined up, the batter didn't have a chance. I struck him out on two more pitches. Then I threw six more pitches and we were out of the inning. It was pretty easy for me. And when I trotted off the field, dad was beaming and his canoe smile was sailing the seven seas. Awesome heat, he said. You blew them away, caveman. You crushed them. Wow, now give me five. And he held out his hand, palm out. I wound up like I was pitching and slapped his hand as hard as I could, which must have stung him a lot harder than it did me because I knew it was coming. Now you give me five, I said, and held out my hand. By the steamed look on his face, I knew he wanted to really get me back. And when he swung his hand down full force, I pulled mine away at the last second. He lunged forward and lost his balance and stumbled for a few steps before he grabbed the chain link fence and held himself up. By then, I was doubled up and howling with laughter like a spotted hyena. And Lizzie and a bunch of the guys who saw what I had done were laughing too. And Dad just had to bite his lip and settle down. I could tell he didn't think it was funny at all. But I thought it was one of the funniest things I had ever done. I looked over at the team and I could tell they liked me after they saw their crazy coach get tricked by his own kid. I always had a way of getting people on my side. I'll get you back, Dad said, trying not to sound too mean, but his face was red. You watch yourself. Sorry, I said in a small voice. Enough fun and games, Dad said, once he pulled himself together. We're down 15 runs. If we don't score some runs in this inning, the ump will call the game short because we're getting blown out. So let's show some backbone. Get out there and hit some balls hard. The first batter was a tall kid with a small face named Defoe who stood like a praying mantis at the plate. He struck out. But the second guy got a base hit. The next guy walked. The next guy walked. The, bus, the bases were loaded, and the next guy struck out without ever taking a swing. Oh, for the love of Pete, Dad yelled at the kid when he scuffed back to the dugout. What were you doing up there? Meditating? Suddenly, everyone was looking at Dad. Next batter, the ump yelled over at Dad. Joey, Dad said and smiled at me because he was still waiting to get me back. You're next. Now show him your double trouble, a pitcher and a hitter. Come on, score some runs and save us from feeling like a bunch of losers. I never hit before, I said. Bergillo held out his bat. Use this, he suggested, before your dad uses it on me. Don't listen to him, I whispered to Virgillo. He, His own mother even says he's all mouth. I went out to the plate and stood with my toes touching the edge of it. You better stand back a foot or so, the ump said, or that guy will drill you. I stepped back and waited. I saw the pitcher wind up. I saw the white ball leave his hand and I swung. I hit nothing. 
Strike one, the ump cried. Then I swung again. Strike two, and I swung again. Strike three, game over. So the game's over because it's like 15 to zero. So it's a slaughter, it's a slaughter roll. They can't play anymore. I didn't even get close. And when I got back to dad, he said, it looked like you were chopping wood out there. Then he kicked the dirt like he was trying to leave a bruise on the planet. I tried my best, I said. I told you I never did it before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he replied. I'm just a little intense sometimes. I want to win for a change. Hey, said Lizzie, and I swear I saw her reach out and twisty pinch dad on the back of his arm like she was turning his intensity dial down. Great pitching, an awesome debut. If this were the big leagues, you'd already be talked about as rookie of the year. I smiled at her and would have just stood there forever with a silly grin on my face. But suddenly the pizza delivery truck pulled up and a guy ran out looking lost. Lizzie waved him over. Over here, she hollered. You're right on time to the feed, to feed the next Nolan Ryan. Oh my goodness. This is so surprising. Joey's, um, I feel like Joey's like becoming like a normal kid. He's actually might have some friends and he found his talent too. He's really a good pitcher for his first time ever. So I think this lazy girl might be his, um, maybe his girlfriend or maybe they're dating, but she's really nice to Joey. So this could be a good thing. I don't know though. We never know what's really going to happen.